Morning guys, uh, I've got a little exercise for you today which is just a, it's another simple riff um, and today we're going to look at a little bit of uh, possibilities with fingering as well because um, uh, I realized through playing this riff that, that I use a different fingering to what I usually use with the right on the right hand. I don't know why. But my right hand is now um, just doing stuff to articulate notes um, without me really consciously thinking of it. Um, and when I start to consciously think of it um, and analyze what I, what, what I did, then I start to make mistakes. Um, so I believe my right hand has just gone and done what is, feels most natural for it, um, which is good, uh, and I'm not going to argue with my right hand. <laughs> so, uh, so uh, what I wanted to do is just show you what what I discovered um, through this pattern. Now, the pattern is a simple pattern, and I'll give this to you as an exercise in tablature as well. The pattern is simply just um, it's. It's a it's a good pattern for minor or dominant seven chords. It's just root, seventh, fifth, octave, root, seventh, fifth, ninth, and then back. And that can be So it's a kind of cool pattern, it's very easy to get around um, because it doesn't move frets very much. So that's tabbed out and you can use that pattern to, to maybe experiment with this fingering um, concept. So this is the fingering concept that I'm going to share with you. Um, basically, I didn't even realize I was doing this, but I uh, through analyzing this, I realized that I'm actually using three fingers to play this groove and I hadn't really even consciously decided to do that, it's just my hand just did it. Um, but when I When I play it with two fingers, uh, I think the quality of the of the bass line is better with three for some reason, and it's flowing more as well. I think as opposed to. Maybe you can't hear the difference, but to me, it feels a little bit different. Um, but anyway, for all intents and purposes, it can't do you any harm to to experiment with with uh, different fingering. So, what I discovered was that I was actually playing the the downbeats on this. Uh, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Two, I was playing the downbeats with uh, my third finger and then just uh, uh, plucking back with my middle finger, so ring, middle. And then, and then this, this pattern here is, is something I subconsciously did as well. 
and that's to create a dead note by resting my thumb on, on the E string. So I'm plucking the E string there um, openly, like I'm not resting my thumb on it, I'm resting my thumb on the, in fact I'm not resting my thumb at all, I'm just, and then I'm resting the thumb afterwards. So that gets you one, two, three, four, right? So one, two, three, resting the thumb, and then plucking with my first finger, one. And then after that, the, the dead note's coming by slapping the strings. Now I'm thinking about it too much. <laughs> ah. It's probably easier just to, yeah, just use that as a dead note between a slapping of the strings. So, one, two, three, and that's simultaneously moving your thumb onto the E string and then plucking a dead note on the A. Yeah, now I'm thinking about this too hard, it's not coming to me naturally, but um, um, so you can see the basic pattern there is, it's ring, middle, slap, first, ring, middle, slap, index on the dead note. So I suggest um, and then the last bit is, is a little bit complicated actually when I analyze my fingering. Um, but um, the main point of this exercise, it's all tabbed out on my website, the main point of this exercise is just to get your third finger into the equation as well. Maybe, maybe up until now you've been using just two fingers, which there's nothing wrong with that. But as you can. But using three fingers, you get a different, slightly different feel, um, a different weight to the notes. I, I feel it's, for me, it's a little bit more, I think it just feels better. Um, so let me play it with the beat. I'll play out with the beat, and then I'll play it really, really slowly one last time for you guys to see. Um, okay. Okay. This is a moderate tempo to play it at, but... the semitone try it near the bridge get the idea, you can hear how different that sounds near the bridge, and also, um, 
it actually feels very comfortable to me to play with three fingers near the bridge. Um, sure, the tone's different if I play above if I play above the um, neck pickup like I was before, or if I play behind the bridge pickup. tones of course but anyway that is the uh, that is basically it uh, that's the exercise what I'm gonna do now is just play it at half the speed so you can see um, what's going on between the hands a little more clearly um, I'll just play the same pattern and uh, I'll just play play it half the, the, the tempo and let's see a good angle for you to see both the right hand That's it, and uh, like I said, you can get the tabs for that at my website. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about the technique, just let me know. Um, I'd be happy to try and answer. Like I said, it's it wasn't something that I really consciously, really consciously came up with. It just over the years of playing, I've been I've been doing various tech techniques. solo bass or intros and stuff like that um, that I developed a little bit of third finger dexterity and then I started using it when I actually play grooves without really th without really thinking about it too much so um, I don't know. Now, now, now that I do think about it, there's a lot of other possibilities that could be done with it. Um, that perhaps, if I sit down and practice it, it will. Uh, I can develop something. Uh, even I can develop something better. Um, but anyway, there you go. It's food for thought, and um, I hope you enjoy trying out that exercise. All right. See you again.